Okay. Hi, everybody. The lighting's weird because it's beautiful outside, but my window isn't sharing it nicely or something. <laughs> this is a knitting podcast called Loop and About, and I'm Alicia, also known as AK47. <laughs> her brain's moving faster than her mouth. <laughs> yes. I'm going to edit that part out so you guys won't even know what just happened. <laughs> I'm Liz, also known as Lizzie215 on Ravelry. And on Instagram, you can find me as Loop and Hook. What have you been up to? Nothing. Baby. It got warm yesterday. Did you guys do something crazy yesterday? No, yesterday was my mother in law's birthday, so I came over for like dinner. A barbecue? Yeah, barbecue. Nice. Um, and as anyone knows, if your in laws are coming over, you spend the morning cleaning. Yeah. <laughs> or basically, if anyone's days. coming over, <laughs> I spend the morning cleaning. So we spent the morning picking up around the house and then, which is difficult because then, you know, the minute I put stuff away, the, the minions kids pull, things pull out. it out. Yeah. So I don't, I don't pick up kid mess because I figure I have little kids. People just need to <laughs> just understand. That. <laughs> and it's gonna, I clean up all the dirt, but the toys are still everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, but yes, we are having unseasonably record high warm temperatures for us in March. We are. This is kind of scaring me as for what is going to come. With the mountains? The in snow. summer. No, oh, the snow. Yeah. Yeah. The snowpack is low this year. Um, and the last couple summers have been really awful. I'm going to try to fix lighting. Um. Yeah, I, the last couple summers have been really, really hot. I think for the last, like, four years, the trend is getting hot earlier, and spring is coming earlier. Like, I know we were out in April last year. I have a feeling we might be able to get outside in March this year, which is just intense. Not good. Well, today it's supposed to be, like, it might hit 70 know, in some places. That's 70 in March is weird. So, yeah, I'm getting really weird lighting. <laughs> okay, so yesterday we went to the mountains, which is weird for us because you that's a weekend, weekend day, yeah. guys. <laughs> yesterday was Sunday, um, but a friend of ours had a bucket list to learn to ski. He's our age. He's actually a year older than us, so we're in our late 30s. He is. He grew up in Chicago, lived in New York because um, he went to NYU, and then I think he made or planned a ski trip too early in the season when he was in New York, and he didn't know any better. Um, and so he didn't learn to ski there, but it's been something that he's been wanting to do, you know, since college days. So we've been out of college for 15 years. That bucket list was unattainable as far as he was seeing because he's about to move to another city shortly, probably in the next year. And so we've been putting it off, putting it off because we haven't skied in the last couple seasons, right? If we were skiing the last couple seasons, we would have taken him already. Well, we heard that this might be his last winter here. And he said, oh, you know, a couple years ago, he said, I want to learn to ski. And Sean taught skiing for ever when he was younger. Um, he's very capable. I'm not, I don't think I'm capable of teaching somebody to ski. Like I know how to ski, but, and I've taught swim lessons. And so I know I can teach things, but I, I don't think I could teach that. So um, <laughs> his goggles broke immediately when we got there. Like I think it was just too tight and he went to put it over his helmet and it just, just failed. So Sean ran to the car, and while he was gone, I'm thinking, oh, crap, I, we got to talk about something. So I taught him how to put his skis on. <laughs> I taught him how to stand up from the ground, right, because he didn't have poles. We figured it would be two less things to worry about. Um, and so I, I pushed him over, and we taught him how to stand up in skis, and I taught him how to get out of his skis, right, to release the brake. Um, and I'm thinking, come on, Sean, anytime <laughs> now, I don't trust myself to teach you anything. I really don't. Especially like ground zero, right? Because I learned when I was eight. You don't remember. And I don't remember <laughs> any of it. So um, Sean came back. We got him going. Had a beautiful day. It was 50 degrees on the mountain. Yeah, that's 
That's on the mountain, that's 4,000 feet we're at from sea level. And yeah, it shouldn't be that warm. In Not April, in March. Or in March, yeah. <laughs> Seriously, spring conditions. I had, I, I usually ski in a t shirt, a thermal, a sweater, and then a jacket. Four layers. And then most of not even talk about the layers that are going on downstairs because I am always cold. So I am overheating and we've only gone the rope toe twice. <laughs> I'm thinking, oh, this is going to be a long day. So at Stevens Pass where we took him, there's a rope toe and then there's these magic carpets. Have you ever done magic carpets? I've seen it on the little kid one, or the little kid, the bunny hills. Yeah. Basically you go on, it, it, it's literally an it's, escalator for mountains. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Except it's flat. It's like the <laughs> ones you see in airports nowadays, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, it's a walking thing, but this one's like a little incline. So there's three stages. There's a baby one that's maybe <laughs> that's the dollar. 15 feet long, <laughs> yeah. right? And then the, there's a medium one, and then there's a longer one. So we went straight to the longer one. Um, friend did not want to turn. <laughs> and just straight one of it. Just straight lined everything. We're like, down the hill. No, we can't. So then near the end, so we took him um, on the carpet for a while, and then we broke for lunch, came back to the carpet one more time, and then we took him to Daisy Chair, which is the um, green runs that you can go on at this particular mountain. And Sean and I were thinking, okay, maybe, you know, it's just not steep enough. That it's not it's, scaring him enough. Then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. To, to encourage him to turn, right? No. So he he'll, he could turn right pretty well, but they're big sweeping turns. He wasn't coming to a stop, right? He was just <laughs> turning and then going hey, straight. That's how and you then learn. Turn, right? <laughs> right? Yeah. Not coming to a stop ever. Ever. Like, uh, the whole time I'm thinking, oh, I'm going to be able to do, practice my helicopters because he's going to do a turn and it's going to take the entire width of the mountain, right? <laughs> These trails are enormous. Well, yeah, they're <laughs> green. They don't want anyone running down and hitting the tree. You would think, you would think that he would, you know, wow, oh, this is, I, I've got wide open spaces. I can take as big of a turn as I want. No, no, I'm going to just straight line everything. So we're chasing him down the, the, the mountain all day and he wouldn't stop at where we were going it was always past so i would wait for the boys i was like i am not climbing up <laughs> these hills every single time so he just blow past where you would like, load up for the, the gates i'm like mm -mm, no, no I, I, you can do it yourself yeah. if you're gonna do that you can come back as slow as you want but i'm gonna stand right here i was exhausted i had peeled off a couple layers i took off my helmet uh, my face was burning. I could, I knew my face was burning because Sean's head was burning. <laughs> and I was like, Sean, you need to put your hat back on. It's too hot. It's too hot. This last night, before we even got to bed, he just had his goggle, like goggle tan going on. I was like, oh, Sean. Sean's Irish and British Why and Russian. It? So he doesn't tan very Why well. Why is it that the people who don't tan are the worst at trying to get them to put sunblock on? Yeah. That's, my that's cousin, gonna hurt. My yeah. cousin is the same way. I don't understand how you people don't just carry a little thingy of sunblock everywhere you go. <laughs> yeah. Well, we didn't have our van because there was three people in the car. So but we didn't still, have ours. But it's still, right? like, I was like, put your hat back on. I don't care if you're burning up. Because I don't want to hear about you complaining about your sunburn for the next three days. My husband is the same way. <laughs> Honey, did you put sunblock on? No. Honey, go put sunblock on. Just go do it. Even I put sunblock on, even though I don't need it. I put sunblock on too because I don't like that feeling. Like, I could feel that I was getting hot, right? Because my leading edge was, was <laughs> I could feel it was getting red. Was like, like oh, especially like, I mean, usually I don't on. need it on my body, but I still need it on my face. I need it on my shoulders. I need it on, and my, I need it on my forehead. I need it on my face. So I put it on my face. And the worst place, one of the worst ways to be sunburned is your face. Because you're smiling. Like, any time you talk, you, yeah. your face changes its shape and it hurts. So, I don't know. Your husband, my husband, same thing. Crazy. Yeah. So, great day. So then we're like, okay, he's not doing turns on Daisy. I guess we'll take him to Hogsback. He had no fears. Like, perfect. So we're like, okay, Hogsback. The chair's going to go a little bit faster. The loading area is a little bit longer. So you kind of have to get to that line in the same kind of fashion we're doing. And then when we get to the top, it, it's going to be downhill. Like, when you get off of the ramp, yeah. it's going to be more downhill than the uphill we were doing at Daisy. So we took him to Hogsback. He straight-lined that, too. <laughs> like, 
Okay, we just took him to Blue Runs on his first day, and he that didn't still didn't encourage him to turn. And when he stopped, he would just put his hip down and he would turtle until he came to a stop. I'm like, oh my gosh, this guy's gonna kill somebody. Thankfully, he didn't hit anybody. Um, we took him off of features yesterday. He jumped off of a box. Wow. In uh, you know, in the kids area it's for Still, learning. that's impressive. Yeah. He did conk his head once. <laughs> good thing for the helmet. He had a helmet on, we were all good. Um, but yeah, he was a really good sport. I mean, we knew he had great balance and he, he had a great athletic. sense of self, right? He was well aware. He's of, athletic. Yep, he's, he's he's good. But man, he took to it like a fish to water. And it was amazing. But at the same time, you're like, no, you're supposed to be afraid to go that fast. <laughs> right? That chattering under your feet, that should freak you out. Right? <laughs> I'm freaked out at how fast you're going. Oh, man, it was funny. So we're going to go again. He says he's already purchased new goggles. <laughs> um, but he only gets probably weekends off. So we was took him out this Sunday. And was it, it crowded? Oh, the traffic coming back. Now, um, the parking lots weren't crowded. Usually on a weekend, you have yeah, to park a sunny at day. the Nordic Center. Yeah. Um, so the Nordic Center, on the back side of the mountain, there's um, – cross-country skiing trails that take you to the the back chairs um at it's a couple miles that you can do right so i think it's five miles from the lodge so you have to i think they have shuttles that go from that parking lot to bring you to the main mountain um but yeah we were we parked across the street they have a pedestrian bridge that goes over the highway and so and we were right there like third car in so it wasn't bad. And that's pretty good. Yeah. And we got there late. It was daylight savings. Right. Oh, that's why. And we slept in yeah, that extra hour. I was like, we're losing an hour? No, we're sleeping an extra mm-hmm. hour then. Um, yeah, it was good. It, yes, I think Saturday was the last day they're doing night skiing. So uh, that could have deterred a lot of people from mm-hmm. coming out on a Sunday, right? I wouldn't want to sit in traffic. Right. But traffic was awful. We left the mountain at 4 p.m. We got to sushi in downtown Seattle at 6.30. And usually it's about an hour and a half yeah. drive, not, yeah. not two and a half Super hours. quick. Um, so through all the small towns, Sultan, Gold Bar, whatever the third one is, I can't think of the third one, um, that was back to back, bumper to bumper. And there's, there's two lights at in the third town that you get to. <laughs> so, and as soon as you get past that, that third light, it just opened up. Like, everybody disappeared. And that, that's by the... Uh, that's right before Monroe. Right, and it's by the the Evergreen State Yeah, by right? the Evergreen State Fair. So, a uh, full town before that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's on the far side of Monroe. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, just, everybody just disappeared. I was like, <laughs> what? Bumper to bumper. Like, we had the longest conversation about 90s music. <laughs> oh, yeah, we decided, what would be on your playlist? I think we named every... Every genre of music besides country and western. Oh, because I know what would be on my playlist. Okay, what would be your ultimate '90s music? Because '90s music is the best. Um, I have eclectic taste, so there'd definitely be Pearl Jam. Oh yeah, Dave Matthews. Yeah, and Sublime. Yes, Sublime <laughs> but I I like to have dance music. So, um, "Be My Lover" was on there. <laughs> Um, like all his early '90s hits. Oh my gosh! Because he's he was a little bit older than us, so we were just talking about high school music, mm-hmm. and his high school started a year before ours did. So he he had like earlier genres that we hadn't even thought of, right? He started listening to dance music in middle school or something. So yeah, it was great, and that filled the two and a half hours. I mean, but, I like '90s dance music, but I, it wouldn't make a listening playlist for me. Really? I don't think we've decided we're gonna make a six. Sean's gonna make a six-hour set, and we're gonna have a party <laughs> for Halloween this year, and it's gonna be '90s. Oh, that'll be awesome! It's gonna be amazing, and you dress up '90s too. It's gonna be so epic. My husband was a, a dance DJ, and um, then not hip hop, um, uh, more of electronica. Uh, yeah, electronic EDM. kind of music. EDM. Yeah. He's stoked. It's like, sure. Now we're going to be singing 90 songs. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. So my ultimate song, like the song that has to be on every playlist that I have, especially if it's my climbing playlist, 
is no rain. So mine started there. What, Blind Melon? No yeah. Rain? <laughs> oh, yeah. And then we went to albums. And then we're like, okay, best 80s from, like, a specific prince, right? And then they're like, uh, or 90s. And they're like, Purple no, rain. all his really, really good stuff that I really, really like is in the 80s. Yeah, so, Purple Rain. So, we, yeah, we had to look up everything by date at that point. We're like, hmm, I don't know. Or, like, Janet Jackson. She was huge in the 90s. <laughs> Rhythm Nation. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, it was just like this, guys. This what's, is what we did what, for what, hours. What's your favorite 90s song yeah. now? List it. Put it up there. <laughs> so disturbed. Um, yeah, it was definitely dance music and grunge and we talked we talk about Kurt Cobain. <laughs> Being from Seattle. Yeah. Come on. Well, what's funny is that Sean grew up in New Jersey. Our friend grew up in Chicago. And I grew up out here. Um, so what was important the subtle to our region. Yeah, the right? subtle differences. And... Sean really got into R&B in high school because he had a friend who would just throw cassette tapes at him, right? And so, of course, we had to say, okay, best boys to men. <laughs> <laughs> and then that, like, jumps into I, a whole I hit or miss on boys to men. It's true. Some days, I'm, I'm like, oh, sweet. Motown Philly. Yes, Motown Philly. <laughs> and then other so days, I'm all like, eh. Yeah, too, too whiny. <laughs> I don't want to hear about you wanting to touch young ladies. So, um, <laughs> yeah. So, it was a rabbit hole. It was a good it, one. It is a rabbit hole. <laughs> okay, so what did you finish this week? I finished a poof. That's oh, about it. Oh, that's a good one. Is that uh, self-striping? Yes. So, it did that itself. It did that itself. Oh. I, didn't, I didn't do anything. That's really pretty. Did that come in um, I don't know from one of our in. friends? Yes, yeah, yeah, something. Our plethora <laughs> of friends that hang out with us now. Who keep me in a uh, hexy poof heaven. It's I, true. In mini heaven is awesome. I have more minis. I love it. <laughs> and then, yeah, that's all I finished. Did you okay. finish anything? No. Not a thing, guys. I worked on things. Yeah. Um, yeah, I get to show you a few things. So, do you want to start on your works in progress or do you want me to go? I can go. Mine are shorter. <laughs> so, I worked on my, my ink a little yes. bit. I got about an inch. There's the stitch marker. Yeah, or there's the progress keeper. Progress. So, not much an inch. Mm -hmm. And that's because I was mostly focused on minion socks. Minion number one socks. The swirly pattern. Oh, wait. I, let's go through yarn. Oh. So. She's going to know this one. I know This it. is Sweet Georgia uh -huh. on ink. And it's a uh, riptide. Yeah. It's a beautiful, deep teal. Yes. It's really pretty. And so I got that far, like I said. And then I am working on, I was focused on Minion Socks, which is why I didn't get eat, because I turned a little baby heel. Well, I guess not. she's not so baby anymore. But I have two heels. She's a tiny human. Um, I use Fish Lips Kiss Heel yes. on the Fish Knits yarn yes. sock. Yes. Uh, 42 degrees something. Opposite the sun. Opposite the sun. I was close. Yeah. And that's her panache base. Yeah. It has sparkle in it. It has sparkle in it. And so Minion number one is very excited. She likes to try on the socks every day now. Mommy, are you done? Are you done? <laughs> Mommy, are you done? Are you it's done? It's going to be a shorty at this pace. <laughs> yeah. So that's where I was last time. There's that a progress a keep. Of progress. Because yeah. she does them two at a time. Yeah, that is. So yeah, that's two socks. Yeah. And I turn the heel. And then this other marker here is because when you do the fish lips kiss heel, mm -hmm. you have to continue for another inch. Right. Once the heel's over. Yeah. And so uh, I know I could tell, but I just like to put a marker in because I'm lazy. No, that's good. <laughs> because she might set it down for a while. Yeah, I might set it down for a while. And, and you'd be <laughs> upset if you forgot to put a marker in. Right. And at yeah. least that reminds me that I have to go another inch before mm -hmm. I can start the pattern going in the round, in right? the round around the sock. Mm -hmm. So I'm about halfway, half an inch okay. away from being able to do the pattern pull up and... I don't think my daughter's, I thought I'd make these a little higher so it'd be super cute, but oh, yeah. I don't think she's going to let wait. Me. Wait. Enough. Yeah. And so, and we tried them on and I made them a little big. I can't do, Fish Lips has a great way of measuring feet yeah. if you're doing socks for somebody else, but I have found it does not work so well for little kids, because at least oh. for my little kids, because the feet grow so fast. Ah, uh, yeah. So, Some I, people make tube socks for kids yeah. rather than a yeah. heel. Yeah. So I instead have found, um, I'm just using the measurements that are built in. If you guys haven't used it, the uh, the sock calculator from yeah. Socks Therapist. Socks yeah. Therapist, her super sock calculator is awesome. So I'm just using the measurements from there for the five to nine year old okay. age. Because okay. I wanted them to be big because I wanted her to have them to grow, grow in. Yeah. 
Especially if she's giving you such a hard time on the thing. Yeah. I think she's going to do the next sock in secret. <laughs> <laughs> no, I probably won't because my daughter likes to go through my stash. Oh, and, like, what are you working on? <laughs> she'll be like, Mommy, you have so much yarn. Which I do, unfortunately. <laughs> Fortunately and unfortunately. Beautiful yarn. Yeah. And so, uh, so yeah. So I did that. And then, yeah, that's it. And, and I work- you're working on a new one. Huh? Oh, and I'm working on a new Hexy Puck, which I just started now during this podcast. Again, I don't know what the yarn base is. But we know who it's from. Becky. Yes. And um, It's really pretty. Yep, yeah, that's about it. Okay. It's a very St. Patrick Eve day. Like, it looks like Luck of the Irish. It does, yeah. It's got gold and orange and green and, and pink and sparkle. So mm-hmm. I thought it was a good one to do for the month of March. And then I'm working still on the baby blanket. I am... Yeah. Did you get the second one done? Eight rows away from getting the second skirt done. I also oh. worked on that a lot, too. But now the rows are really long. Yeah, now the rows are <laughs> a square that starts in the center. And, and it grows out. outwards, and you increase eight stitches every row. And it uses 125 grams to make yeah. the square. <laughs> it goes so. down from that. So I will have that done this week and blocked to show you next week. And then I'll mm-hmm. probably just, no, I'll wait to stitch them all four together. Because sometimes the blanket, you know, the squares are a little off. Okay. Not much. Blocking yeah. usually fixes everything, yeah. but... So you block to the same size. Yeah, block to the same size. Yeah. And then, um... Halfway done! That yeah. is so exciting. Yeah, because it's two out of four, right? Two out of four, exactly. I should probably talk about the elephant in the room <laughs> yeah. now, guys. It's, 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 it's literally white. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's very crisp. Okay, so this goes back a while. Um, in the winter of 2012... I got an amazing opportunity to work for the Pacific Northwest Ballet costuming department. I was just a helper. Um, They needed a crocheter, crocheteist, to um, aid in the production of a new ballet, which was, at that time, Romeo and Juliet. And uh, they were trying to, they were using kind of a chain mail kind of structure um, to cover the male and the female dancers, like, or no, it was all male dancers. So they the, needed they needed full chain mail. Yeah, it was beautiful. <laughs> we were holding like seven strands together on the same time using a pretty big hook. But man, it was hardy. Like yeah, you could you could probably fight in those things, <laughs> and you would have some protection. Well, anyway, while I was there, um, another person also helped, um, but she was a knitter by trade. Um, And she could crochet, so she was helping in the crochet, but crocheting just really wasn't her thing. Well, she was given this heirloom uh, pattern and, uh, gosh, 20 balls of 100% wool in white. Like, I I don't know if it was someone who had retired and had given up the crochet bug because of, like, arthritis reasons, and she gifted her this pattern and the yarn just make it I just want somebody to make it well I was a crocheter and so she says would you make this because I'm not gonna make it let's be honest I'm I'm not (laughs) gonna make it Um, would you be interested and I said actually my grandmother is starting to get interest back into crochet Um, she made quilts for a little while and then it was just too hard on her eyes to do any more sewing and so we traded. I traded my grandmother for this, <laughs> and she gave me all her quilting scraps, which I'm going to be using in a potential quilt. Um, so I gave this to her, and she was working through it slowly. Um, so she took it to Hawaii, because she goes to Hawaii every winter, and she got together with a sewing group that knew how to crochet, and these three ladies decided to start making these blocks together, because... <laughs> They could help each other out, right? They're all in the same age group, all the same generation. It was just a social thing. It was a social event. And they started, I think they each did a square. Well, my grandmother came home. I, I think I think at the end of her winter season there, she came home and asked if she could leave the yarn in Hawaii. And when she came back, they would meet up again and do it again to do a, a crochet along. Yeah, 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 that sounds great. Yeah, just leave it at my house. Well, the lady got the bug to finish the entire (laughs) thing while my grandmother was back here in Washington living with my parents. So she got back, and the lady said, I am so sorry. I am so sorry. I got so excited to do the, because each of these blocks is a different thing. 
I'm so excited. Yeah. I got addicted and I couldn't stop doing it. <laughs> she finished it, pieced it, did the border all the way around it. She's like, but I don't know how to wash it. I think you take it to a dry cleaner. You don't take it to the dry cleaner. So I took it from my mom. My mom brought it back because my mom went to um, a couple funerals this winter <laughs> while my grandmother was still there. And my grandmother asked my mom to pack it back because <laughs> that takes up a huge space yeah. in, in luggage. So I got it a couple weeks ago and it was just too cold to do. You know, the yeah. house was cold. The fan wasn't going to dry it. It was going to take days. So my grandmother came back early because winter's not over. She usually comes <laughs> back April, May. She came back first week of March. So Nana's asking about the blankets. <laughs> <laughs> The first day over 60 here, I'll wash it. I was like, this is a hassle. Like, this is enormous. It's a queen size quilt. 100% wool. It's going to be a beast. Sean helped me a lot. I was damp for the entire day <laughs> after doing this. So uh, the only room in our house that could handle this kind of thing was in here in the living room. So we pulled back the carpet. We spread it out, turned the fan on. Malu was unimpressed. She's like, I'm not coming in the house with that fan on. And what did you put by my door? I'm not coming inside. So she stared at it for hours at the window. Um, <laughs> it took a day and a half to dry. But yeah, it's done. I wish I knew what the pattern was. She didn't get the pattern back. It was a pattern book, um, an Afghan block. I tried to look it up. I couldn't find anything that even resembled it. But, yeah, white. But it's my grandmother. She's 80. Yeah, it's not, they like white. There's no pets. So. It's, it, I mean, it's a beautiful blanket. It yeah. does look like a very large doily. It's, it's, it's crochet. <laughs> Each of those blocks is crochet. The board, all of it, 100%. Same thing. It was, <laughs> it was impossible to block properly. Block the block and the windowing. You they were so tightly done that yeah. some of the seams, yeah, it's just, it's gonna look wonky and original and handmade. <laughs> that's that's all I could do. I, I tried my best to get them to be the same size, and I gave up on it. Sean's like, "You are breaking your back, literally, trying to get this piece." I kind of wish I had an enormous table that I could have done that on. <laughs> Because you I was doing it, table. yeah. Because I was doing it on hardwood floors on my knees. Like, yeah. Sean's like, just turn the fan on. Just, just stop. <laughs> Whatever you're doing right now, just stop. So, um, yeah, huge. Then there's more behind <laughs> it. There, it's queen size. It's queen size. But I thought I'd show it to you guys because we never really get to see crochet on here. Even though we both crochet, but we just don't have a lot of finished objects to show you. Nope. So. I worked on, back to works in progress, my lab works, I finished Sean's body Yay! of this Emmeline by Ariane Karen Lacosta. I think that's how you say it. So I bound off. There's no strings attached, guys. So I have arms to do, and then I have a hood. I have a provisional cast on up here. This is where I started. And I'll add more up there for a hood. You might actually finish that knowing you in the next coming week. It's true. I Because you'll be like, I'm so close. Yeah, it is really close. And I'm very happy with it. I think I have enough yarn. I'm not stressed about it. Um, I have a button band still to do that I could stress about. But we'll see. Right now, without the button band, it fits me. So I'll probably have to put two inches of button band on there for Sean. Yeah, he loves it. I'm very pleased with it. Um, it looks awesome. Some of the yarn I wasn't thrilled with, but it is what it is. And it, I'm done. I'm done with the junk stuff, the part that I didn't like. But three Irish girls, mostly, and then a couple pieces of plucky in the striping and the gray. And I've gone through all those colorways before, so you're probably bored with that. If you want to see what they are, it'll be in the show notes in our group. Um, really, really enjoyed that pattern. It's really simple. Basic. It's really just knit into a certain length. Knit to a certain stitch count, right? Super easy. But the big thing that I worked on this week was my top. Oh, yeah. 
And yeah, guys, we're doing a lot of garments here. <laughs> we have a we have a goal of garments this year. And this one is Sumu Zikaze by Michio. And I think I said before that this was in Japanese and English. It's not. It's only in English. But she does have a lot of Japanese patterns. And this was um, a project that she was commissioned to do for the fiber. I think the fiber co, which is the um, yarn that I'm using. There is six or seven more patterns in this collection, and they're all beautiful. This is a very light fingering, heavy lace yarn. This is the Aster colorway. I love that colorway. And the Fiber Co. Meadow base. Super light. It's wispy. Like when I wear this, it's it's probably gonna feel like nothing. I'm not, it's I'm a not great wear it. spring it's not or summer me, top. Yeah, and all the increases are done in lace. Where's the base pattern? I think that's so. so there's cool. no seam. Like it's just it's flawless. It's really beautiful. Um, I got the sleeves done. You did? Yeah, I'm in the round again, guys. So there's my little sleeve hole on one side. Uh, last time you saw, Liz helped me uh, feel confident about my. The gauge. My gauge. Yeah. And I just moved on. And it was good. In two days, I had the front and back panel done. So I was really stoked. So now I'm in the round. There's short rows involved because it's asymmetric at the bottom. Asymmetric. Right? It's llama, merino, silk, and linen. It's pretty ridiculous. And then I have stitch markers on here. And they're all from Sarah. Yeah. Our friend yeah. Sarah at, from Seattle. Seattle Sky Dye, Dye Works. Works. That's a pine cone. Isn't that pretty? You know, I was talking to her the other day, and she makes all these jump, what are these called? Jump somethings? Jump rings? She winds this around a dowel by hand, a piece of wire, right? Whatever gauge wire that is. And then seals them with a bead by hand. Because she says she couldn't find the quality um, that she has grown to love <laughs> and that she can do herself. Um, the second one of hers on here is a little robot. She says she has three different types of robot. This is her smallest one. And then one more of hers is this tag, which is a theme of Alice in Wonderland, and it says, Drink Me. That. And it's got a little red bead on it. Really love it. I think. And I paired them. So there's I, I, I have a collection of them on here because the short rows like only go part of the way around. And then the next one goes part of the way around. And then the <laughs> next one goes part of the way around. So I wanted to pair the ones that I was going to knit to so that I would remember to stop. <laughs> right? So I paired off. And that's because this is right asymmetrical, here. right? It's asymmetric, so it's building, the the round, yeah. it's building one side heavier than the other. Um, so, yeah. It's a paper pattern. Really easy to follow. It has many sizes. And it looks like it's um, got some positive ease. So, oh, it definitely has positive ease. Yeah, so you guys should check it out. If you if you like this Swancho style that's in right now, it's very breezy, very comfortable. Uh there are a lot of people that have done it. I feel like over a hundred people have made this pattern. So there's a bunch of information out there if you think you might get intimidated. I have had zero issues with it. And the yarn is lovely. It's very rare that I make the pattern out of the yarn that it was that they used that they to. called for, mm -hmm. right? But yeah, this is I don't know if I would I might use Wulmaisa, their lace yarn, because it's a heavier lace weight. It is a heavier lace weight. And it would, I would call it light fingering. Yeah, <laughs> I think it would mimic the weight of it, but the this base is just airy. So, if, yeah, I would look for this blend if you like the look of it and are in, interested in trying another yarn. I'm really enjoying this one.
So, I started my uh, paper foundation, my foundation paper piecing. You did it! I did. Now, this is the pattern. <laughs> this is pattern section one of three for this first block. And there's eight blocks. Yeah. <laughs> so 24 sections, basically, is what you're saying? I think some of them have three sections, some of them have two. Okay. Right? It's gonna, but it's big. So this is a tree with a branch and some background. Okay, right? I see that. Right? So all of the um, sewing is done on this side. You get its mirror image on the back. So there's my tree and the branch and the background. And the background has some aloha print and one of them has numbers on it. This one. So I decided I'm going to put together heritage and my current nerdiness. <laughs> so I'm really stoked. At first I was thinking, oh, the trunk should be solid. And then I thought, no, the idea to do this scrappy is to show, you know, the scrappiness, the scrappiness yeah. of the thing. Because I could have picked the solid part of that Aloha print, and it could have just been a plain trunk. No, we're going I for... I like it, though. Right? I like it, the pattern. It's technical. There. Uh, so, this is piece number one. I started with the branch, and then I added those two. And then I added this guy. Then I added this guy. And then I added the grass at the bottom. So you'll see that all foundation paper piecing has numbers. And you sew on the line between one and two, and then the line between two and three. But in this case, the second sewing was between one and three. You see that? Now, if it were an easy pattern, it would go in order. The, the numbers would like the seams would go in order. Mm -hmm. This is not a beginner pattern. <laughs> Why would we ever start with a beginner pattern? <laughs> Why would I do that? That's just silly. I gotta try something hard and impossible at least once. Now, I don't think my stitch, my stitches per inch are correct. I think I went the wrong direction. I went up thinking, inch. and I think it was making the stitches bigger rather than making it small. So next time I'm at the sewing machine, I'm going to go to the smaller numbers rather than the bigger numbers and see if that makes it smaller. But for this one block, I'm not going to worry about it. Super fun. So um, so do you <clears> leave <throat> the paper inside? You, I leave it right now because this is only one of three pieces that are going to make the tree, or four pieces that are going to make the tree. So um, you, wanna you see it's properly. framed. Yeah. That's a seam allowance, the last line. So that's my last seam is inside this seam allowance, right? Mm -hmm. So I need to keep this because I'm going to sew it to more things, Okay. right? So when the whole tree is done, I'll be able to cut all the ends off. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty complicated <laughs> endeavor. Yeah, I think you yeah. need a you need a you need a dedicated class uh, craft room to do. <laughs> yeah, so my parents gave me a room at their house that no. I can leave my stuff in, which is awesome. Um, my mom is very intrigued by this. Uh, my mom has picked up her stoking, sewing bug. I think you're stoking the fire. Yeah, yeah, she's feeling creative, so she's made. Um, you better watch out. You know what's gonna happen? You're gonna leave this. I'm there. gonna leave the stuff there. She's gonna like it. it. <laughs> She'll be like. I got it. I got. Oh, I got shit. the bug. I got the bug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, no, she was seeing each step, and I was going to the ironing board, and she's like, "You're crazy," because it it is complicated in how you how you place the pieces together. Like the third, the sewing line on the third one had me thinking for about fifteen minutes. <laughs> the first one, I was good. The second one, I was like, how do you cut that? How do you fold that? Because the right side has to be facing in the end, right? So you have to flip it out when you're done with the sewing the seam, right? And you have to cover its entire piece, right? 
it is complicated. I'll give it that. <laughs> I, would, I wouldn't say this is a beginner, let's get into quilting. This is my first quilt, my first paper piecing, my first sewing since I was in middle school, besides a zipper. I put a zipper in my little notions pouch that I made myself a long time ago. Um, but yeah, I'm basic. <laughs> I can do a straight line, and that's why I picked this, because I can do a straight line. Um, and so far, so good. I don't hate it. I, 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 I did get stalled out a little bit, but I didn't make a mistake in the end. So then I was like, oh, I'm good then. <laughs> you didn't trip me up. You just had me thinking on the sideline for a little bit. So yeah, I think I'm going to like this. I think I will see this done maybe this year. So I showed you that pattern that is called My Kind of Town, and that is by Peggy Larson. She made it for Fiberworks, but I don't know what a Fiberworks is. I bought it at a quilt store in Leavenworth over by where you can go pick apples and stuff. Um, there's a little market, and the little market is connected to a quilt store, quilt store. And I asked them, do you know anything about foundation paper piecing? And she, she gave me a weird look, and she's like, I don't know if you would say that. I have one pattern. <laughs> and maybe you'll like it. I love it. I showed I it. I have in, one pattern. <laughs> I, I showed it in episode me. eight. Um, if you want to see what I'm, I'm making in, in the long run. Um, yeah, I really like it. There, There's a one page that kind of gives you some structure of how to paper piece. I went to YouTube and I watched a bunch of videos. There's one in particular that, that I like, and I'm going to post it up on the screen. And yeah, it, it, it is a more complicated pattern in that YouTube video that I'm posting. Just because I knew this was a little complicated, and I needed, it, I needed to see a hard one done. It wastes a lot of fabric. But this is all scraps. That's why it's all scraps. It's pieces yeah. you wouldn't use as, yeah, yeah. It's not like your. I bought some fat quarters, or I had my mom buy me some fat quarters when she was in Hawaii, because you can only get really good Aloha prints back home. So I asked her to go in and get some purples, because we were extremely lacking in purples. <laughs> I think because my grandmother likes purple, too. So she used, so she used most of it. Um, and I thought, no, the first house I make in this it has to be purple. So that's going to be later on in a couple weeks, hopefully. Um, and I needed the white background. So in the quilt sample picture, they use tans and white for behind the scenes. So behind the trees and behind the buildings. And I just didn't like the look of it. So I'm going to make mine all white behind everything so everything's crisp like the, you'll know it's a tree and you'll see the star in the sky right it's not going to be like i'm going to have to look closely in a jigsaw puzzle to see what, what's in there um but in order to do that i needed some white so she went and got white on white aloha print for me and then i found a fat quarter with all the numbers on it for two dollars at the quilt expo and i'm using that too I'm hoping I have enough. If not, I'll just pick up something yeah, along else. the way. But I'm really enjoying it. It's weird to cut into the big pieces of fabric. <laughs> just enough for what you need, right? Because that, I get, seems very wasteful to me. Um, yeah, but I'm hoping but you get over if it. you keep all the other pieces, though, you might need other small yes. sections yeah. somewhere else. So the tiny things that I'm cutting off, I'm throwing away because they won't fit yeah. anywhere else. But... If I miscut or something, I'm just setting it aside. Mm -hmm. Now, what's really funny is that the, carp the rug that I'm doing this over was browns and greens and, you know, kind of an Aloha print rug, right? And I dropped a strip that was going to be the trunk. Couldn't find it for the life of me. <laughs> Turning on all the lights, like shaking out all the big pieces of fabric. I'm like, where did this go? Yeah, it was flipped over, so the lighter side was up, and it was on the rug below me. I was like, oh my gosh, if I would have had to cut that piece one more time. So, I am enjoying my extracurriculars. Good for you. Yeah, I was afraid to start it to think that I wasn't going to like it. But, I'm good. Coast is clear, guys. I really like it. You like it? Yep, stoked. How about you? Are you doing anything extracurricular? Nope. No. Did you get anything in the mail? 
Nope. <laughs> We're Acting doing so good. good. <laughs> We're knitting from stash, shopping from stash. It's good. I have a couple things skinned up for hopefully a cast on this week that is from stash, and it's from our retreat stash, so it'll qualify for things that are in the future. And I think that pretty much sums up most of the content. Hold on, guys. So we have a train that's about to leave the station. I've added mine. Liz is going to probably add in the next, in the round, next round of things. Because we want to just get it out there. Yeah. So I think we have five stops right now. And so we're going to send it out. We'll decide what region of the country it's going to first. We left some fish belly fiber in there so you guys can try it out. She was the last stop of the first train. And yeah, it looks like there's some tastings from everybody in the group. There's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to take one from Philippa, but <laughs> there was only one left in there. So I'm going to send it on its way and see if you guys want some stuff from Portugal too. Um, yeah. A wide range of colors in here, guys. You guys did really, really awesome. There's some oranges and yellows and purples. I put some blues and teals in there. But yeah, good selection. And we have some repeat stops, so that'll be fun. So dig in when it comes. Choo-choo, the train is coming. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, there is a mini skein train that we do. We send this out to the first person on the list. When they receive it, they PM the next person on the list for their address. They take a picture of the before. They take a picture with what they're taking and what they're putting back in for the train. So it's a skein for skein swap. So if you take out seven, you add seven. So the running total is always the same. And then you send it to the next person, the next person does the same thing. PM the next person on the list, get their address, take a picture, take a picture of what you're taking and what you're adding, pack it up, send to the next person. And on and on and on until it comes back to Seattle. Yep. Yeah. So we have had great success with the first one and we hope that this one will roll out just as well. Oh, do we have any retreat stuff we need to talk about? No. No, no. I don't think anything's really changed. Um, the date is still the, the same. The date is the same, <laughs> April 12th through 15th. We have seven people. No, we have six people coming. We have a car that seats seven. That means I can be a driver and we can, we can get everybody in the car. Um, we have the days planned out. If you watched the last episode, none of that has really changed. I'm trying to think. And then this week we are going to book the room because we have closed reservations. Yay! Yeah, but I'm going to schedule some dinners and schedule the booking for our rooms. So that's the plan. I think that's pretty much that's it. it. Until we knit again, which could be in 30 days <laughs> if you're coming to see us. Bye. Bye.